In 1911, local mechanics Azor Robbins and Alexander Porter embarked on an ambitious plan to build their own monoplane. Spurred on by the world's fascination with flight, they set up shop, initially in Dean Street and then here on the actual site of the Aubrey Library Museum. In March 1913, the locally constructed, home-built monoplane was fitted with the flat four engine. Soon after, taxi trials commenced and on the 27th of July 1913, in front of six witnesses, the monoplane flew. While other planes would surpass the one built by our amateur aviation enthusiast, Robinson Porter, today they are credited with designing and constructing the first monoplane fitted with a flat four aero engine and the only one in Australia to have ever flown. I'm Jeff Robbins, great nephew of Asa Dyer Robbins, who is the, one of the partners in the Albury Flyer, I think it was called, uh, the aeroplane they built and flew in Albury in 1913. Asa was born in Tilden, a little country town in central Victoria, and from there they moved to Melbourne and he went to the Working Men's College, which is now Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and he studied mechanical design and mathematics. Uh, I'm now standing on the site of where they had their first um, purpose-built motor garage. It was a you know, magnificent achievement for them to, uh, to actually be able to design it and, and build it and then fly it successfully. And that's ideal, the fact that it was uh, on the site of the actual museum now where, they, where the boys worked. So. I'm not surprised that it flew, I'm just surprised they were game enough to fly it. <laughs> uh, fairly brave, I suppose they may well have uh, got a bit of a shock, but um, when it come to flying... Harry Hawker flew through here and uh, he had a look at the aeroplane and uh, he more or less said, according to the article in, in an old Australian book about Australian aircraft, he more or less said that uh, perhaps it was good that it didn't get much height. It looked quite flimsy to him, apparently. And a good indication that they, they got the original design right was that the, our local scale modellers have built a radio-controlled scale model aircraft and have flown that, and it flies very well. It's the same excitement Steve Jobs and, and Wozniak would have had when they put, or, or, or Gates had when they put their computers together in their garage, right? The heyday of information technology turn of the century was the same thing. So you've got to appreciate the excitement people went through. You know, this, is the, this is a totally new universe. You suddenly are able to get airborne. From a significance perspective, nationally it is an a early type of plane, locally designed, locally built. That makes it important. But it's also a great testament to the innovation and the excitement which, which happened at that particular period of time. It effectively meant that Aubrey was a part of Australia's pioneering aviation heritage. So I think it is important for us to recognise that we have a history of innovation in this particular area. Uh, it's supposedly the only uh, flat four engine powered plane that flew in Australia at that time, so they were the first. Could be the first four cylinder horizontally opposed aircraft engine ever. The engine disappeared for many years and I was reading an article in a uh, aircraft magazine about um, articles in the Museum of Victoria. And we, we went to the Museum of Victoria and found this box full of or engine parts. And it was the engine of what was left of it. And our youngest son and a friend of ours who's a mechanical engineer was able to assemble all the parts that were available.
All of the ribs were made off the same yeah, thing. We made that jiggy blue ridge on it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah that might work. We've printed up the photograph to a large, large size and then drawn in what we can't see. Uh, it's been very difficult to generate an aircraft from a bunch of photographs or three photographs. It's uh, because invariably in a photograph things go out of proportion uh, as the distance and so we've had to generate and get everything to the right, in the right proportions as we've scaled the aircraft. It was a real challenge because I'd never made anything like that before. I was supplied with a book, um, How to Build an Aeroplane from 1913, which had a section on building propellers in it. And um, so I had to interpret, it, interpret that to see how you would go about it. And um, I, I built a trial propeller to start off with and a few um, trial runs, and then I was right to go from there. So it was a real challenge. We've had to use uh, blacksmith methods uh, because that's what they used in the original, original aircraft. Um, so we've had to, to use those same methods the, uh, with today to actually make it so it looks the same when it's finished. Trying to keep it as authentic as possible, that you can't see every minor detail. So you think, right, oh, you, you're working with an old craft, so let's think that way. And um, we're ending up with something we hope is as close as we can possibly get. Haven't done anything quite like this before, although I've been involved in quite a few historical um, uh, recreations before, um, but most of it's heavier work than this. It's it's a very light and delicate, uh, obviously, because it's got to keep the weight down building an aircraft, so I'm having to be very careful. 